I got very, very sick. Um, from 17 to 19, I struggled horribly with anorexia. I went from 135 pounds to 102 in the matter of two months. Um, and I starved myself. And then was I, that was that because you were telling yourself that or was it because the agency was telling you that there was a my, the agency was very supportive in my weight loss until there had a point where I wasn't booking work because I looked so malnourished. Wow. Like I just you could see every rib, every part of me. I looked like a walking oh. skeleton. What's up, guys? I'm Nadia Mejia, and you're watching Living Large. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome into the podcast, another episode of Living Large. Welcome to the 10,000 new subscribers we picked up this past week. Our recent podcast with Logan got on TMZ. So that's a big round of applause for us, Living Large. Today's guest, Miss California, USA 2016, top five Miss USA 2016. Her dad is Mr. Rico Suave, and she's dating Sam Webb, the Australian mate. <laughs> That was a really good bio. I was like, where is this guy? Where's all from? this info come? Nadia Hello? Mijaya. M Magina? Maj oh, sorry, my bad. Um, Mejia. Mejia. And you said that your nickname growing up was Gonads. Go Gonads. <laughs> Why? I was a dancer, so every time people would come to a competition, like, Nods was my nickname, but it's like, Go Nads. And like, whoa, people are like, who is that? And it was me. I'm like, oh. Well, at least it wasn't like my nickname. Guess what mine was? What? Donor Boner. So, oh. I mean, they both I mean, dealt with compliment, uh, phallic kinda. things. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, but welcome on to the show. I'm Thank glad you. to have you. This was super last minute and I hit you up and you were down. I'm always there for you, Mark. You know what? I we, we met at Stagecoach mm -hmm. and we made up this little hashtag, where's Nadia? Oh. Because... I got lost. I want to I start with this story because this just showed me your personality right off the <laughs> right off the gate. Uh, we were all, you know, having a good time fiesting a little bit. Yes. And... We lost you. Okay. The yeah. group lost you. I'd like to blame tequila <laughs> and the fact that Stagecoach is so large. There's so many people there. Yeah. And like, I thought I saw my group. Y'all are tall and beautiful. I was like, we the guest squad. And next thing I know, like I went to go say hi to like one random friend who wasn't even real my friend. And I looked at her, I was like, where is the family? And my phone was dead. And I had no idea where I was, so I just started looking around, panicking. But I'm also under the influence, which was awful. <laughs> so I'm like, I felt like it was in a scary movie. And then I, you guys were gone, and I couldn't. How find did you find us, by the way? Um, well, how did you find your way back home? Because we were home. Oh, were and then, you? I'm sure you were yeah. jacuzziing and having a good time. Do you know where no, I was? Stop. I was in an Uber line of 600 people <laughs> after I cried to seven security guards for someone to give me a charger. I was like, I, I'm lost. My group is gone. I'm a, like a 23 year old woman. They're like, you are not 15. Like, yeah. get over it. No one cared. <laughs> um, and I was like half naked in my guest clothes. They're like, okay, how? Like, you out of here. I'm like, all right. So, really didn't get much help. And then when I did, it was about. 1 a.m. at this time, everyone's cruising back at the house. I yeah. finally get my phone charged. Then I realize I have to walk to an Uber line because our private car left me yeah. and refused to come back. Next thing I know, 3.30 a.m., I'm walking into the house, and the only person up waiting for me is Mark, and he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, <laughs> mascara right down my face. I'm like, no. And I was scarred ever since. So the hashtag uh, stagecoach was, where is not? Yeah, but that was a great, great trip, and I'm Amazing. glad I got to meet you, because right? your personality, I wanted to ask you about this, you're so open, and ever since I've hung out with you, you don't give a shit about what you say. No. Is it, does it stem from, because I was doing research on you, that you were, you were on a reality show with your, with your family, yep. and I watched a few episodes, and you're very, like, you kind of were the star of the show, I'm uh, not going to lie. Oh, thank you, I'll take that. Yeah, um, I mean, being on, you always have to be on, right, like, for TV purposes, right. So, but did you learn that from the reality show or did you already have that? I grew up in a family of like entertainers. Yeah. Dad Rico. Mom was Miss West Virginia and a model. But my mom is like the loudest, craziest human. If you think I'm loud like <laughs> and like open, she's too much to where my mama like you're going to end up in a straight jacket, but I'll visit you. <laughs> um, but anyway, so like I just grew up with a very outgoing family. So I've really learned to just like wear my heart on my sleeve like in even with TV, of course, like I said, always being on, always feeling like I had to be the star. Cause like my sister is very quiet. My brother is mm -hmm. very quiet. So it was like, Nadia pulled through for us on this episode. And now I just haven't learned to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> is it weird filming? Is it weird? Like living real life in your house with camera people there? Like, I don't, what's it like to have a reality show? Because that's like, okay. Think of a nine to five. 
yeah. with your family. So you're working nine to five with your family, which was great. But in that nine to five, there's like scene one, scene two, scene three. They give you scenarios. It was okay. like, it wasn't scripted by any means, but they set up situations. They put us in very unrealistic situations. Like I worked at a bakery at some point in one episode. I was like, well, I when saw, am I going to work at I a saw you say something. I want to know if this is scripted. Your brother woke up late. in your Crusty socks. Yeah, yeah. The crusty sheets. Oh, he's yeah. He's like, he's at that age. Did they tell you to say that or was <laughs> no, that just. That's my wit. I'm really witty and inappropriate. And like my dad is like. Rico Suave to a pastor. Yeah, I saw that too. He's a pastor now. <laughs> so he's always like, Nadia, please just like keep it under control. Like watch what you say. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Like it's not going to happen. I can't, I don't have a filter. Is it when you shoot, when you film a reality TV show, does everything go or do you guys have to approve it? Like what if you said something fucked up? My dad was executive producer, okay. which was the smartest thing because reality TV can fully go against you because yeah. they argued with my dad which is why there was no season two because yeah. it was like they wanted me to be a ratchet and my dad's like we are a good family yeah. so, it was just so they just clashed clashed um, but without my dad there would have it would have been rated R because well yeah I mean we've hung out with people from The Bachelor and they've talked about how much they <laughs> <laughs> I love those people Yo, by and you, the way yeah I, oh, I love this the people this show is, is just but you watch it I see okay, your fucking Instagram listen, listen, Stories. I watch it in a way of just I'm genuinely interested because I have so many friends who have been on the show and I'm like I love them as people I want to understand why and I only really would watch The Bachelor I didn't watch The Bachelor I watched The Bachelorette okay why because it's like these corny men like really putting their heart on the line and it's so painful but do you think to watch in this day and age like I feel like a few years ago like it was a real show right oh, it was. But now I feel like it's like, hey, let me get my social media followers up. Let me start getting these brand deals and walk my way into fame. Fully. And I know some people go on it with the right intention, um, but they're, that's very few. It really, you, you go on that show and you go from a thousand followers to 1.5 million yeah. followers. Like, it's the craziest thing of what a big fad that is, Bachelor Nation. Mm -hmm. And um, I think for me, like I said, I watched it in the beginning. I did not watch the season where my friends were on. Mm -hmm. I've just been more interested recently because I've been hanging out with yeah. people from it and it's such a thing. And now I just like to like sit back and make fun of it. But <laughs> like, good for them. I hope they find love some way somehow. Just maybe not on that There's show. a lot of pageant girls on there. It's like a transition, right? Thank God I found Sam. You'd see me on next season of The Bachelor, like trying to keep the thing alive. Please, Sam, thank you for saving Speaking me. Speaking of that. Sam, Sam, I want to bring you in here for just a quick second. Uh, Papa squat next to mom. He's on the show Neighbors in Australia, mate. Oh, oh, and also, I shit. want to talk because we were talking before the show. Pull the mic to him. He almost got deported today because he just got back to America. Why? It's been a very rough morning in the office. So Why? What been, happened? I got in. I flew into LA this morning from Melbourne. And, um,. I got pulled into customs into the secondary screening like I do every other time. <laughs> These guys were pepping, peppering me with every possible question you could think of and I come back with answer after answer and I'm lucky to be here. The guy was looking to get me out of here on tonight's flight back to back to Sydney or Melbourne. Why? Did he think you were here to work or yeah, something? Yeah, because I I'd booked an extended extended trip for, for a number of reasons and um, <laughs> Nadia being one of them but um, and pursuing other goals of mine but... He's like, you don't have a, a detailed itinerary. This is not on. When you come over here on, a, on this visa, you have to have a planned itinerary in and out and get, the back, get back to your country. And you know, I get where he's coming from, man, but he was, he was peppering me, wanted me out of here. Dude, it's so crazy. I've had a few foreign people on here. The process of like and how hard it is to get into America right. is outrageous. And to become a citizen. Mm. Like my buddy's been living here on like a student visa and then he got a this visa and a that visa. And then like... He's finally got like an O one one visa, but he's been tr like, it's been the most stressful thing for him. Is that something you want to do or do you like living in Australia? I, I lo look, um, I love Australia, man. I'm very lucky where we live. And um, I think there's beautiful places all over the world. Um, America's got an amazing culture um, and getting a visa and, and spending some time over here um, for the very foreseeable future is definitely on, on the cards. It's yeah, something right. I'm going to work towards and I'm, I'm going to get there. But, you know, this has thrown a little bit of a, an iron in the fire, <laughs> so to speak, but it's just another one of those road humps. We just we just uh, get across it one day, so yeah. it'll work out. How did you guys meet? Tinder? <laughs> no, wait, you guys met. Where'd you no, meet? I've never had. To. I've never had a dating app. I unlike not. No, I, 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 okay, first of all, it was Raya. Can we just like let? Still, let's not, I can't even get on Raya. Why? I don't fucking know. That got me on a wait list. No, they didn't. Yes. We need to make some what? phone calls. <laughs> I can give you like a friend suggestion. I've gotten two friend suggestions. So guys, if you guys are listening, Raya is like the elite dating app okay. in LA it's where you awful. have to be like 
a someone. hot girl or like verified on Instagram <laughs> to get on. I'm not a hot girl, but I'm fucking verified <laughs> on Instagram. Put me on. No, you definitely should. Raya, like, let, let me say, <laughs> he needs to be on it. Um, No, actually, you don't want to be on that. No, it's, I know. I find it crazy because people on Raya are like, ew, Tinder, Bumble. I'm like, y'all are Same literally shit. a bunch of egos on that <laughs> app. It's like, who's more famous? Who was in more things? And like, let's battle. I've never heard a love story off of Raya. Um. <laughs> Wait, actually, I have Greg Salkin and Michelle Randolph. That's they a met on Raya. Love story. And then, I don't know if that's what it is. <laughs> then Maddie Medeiros and her boyfriend. Okay, see? Yeah. But thank God I didn't meet him on Raya. I met Sam. There's like a long... Did you meet him in real life? Yeah. No fucking way. Okay. They're very rare, man. <laughs> very, very rare. So a mutual friend of ours um, who was like visiting from Australia to California, I'd met through someone who I dated in the past was wrote wrote me when i got to australia on my second day there and he's like oh i would love to see you like you're is that in how Sydney. he sounded or he's like oh i'd like to how see to you <laughs> yeah i'd love to love to catch up man let's catch yeah. up now if i try to do an australian accent it's disgusting yeah. it's like british gone wrong <laughs> um but he was like oh i'd love to see you like let's catch up i'm like sure let's go to dinner tonight it was my second day i was jet lagged i was like but i need oh to straight to the date yeah i needed like a tequila. true gentleman yeah. yeah but no 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 it wasn't even a date it was just like a a friend meetup and he's like bring your roommate i'll bring my friend i'm like sick so then i got there and his friend was just this beautiful stunning Aussie. Was this him? Yeah. <laughs> okay. no it wasn't him actually yeah. <laughs> it was actually his friend yeah, and then i met and him then, <laughs> no and then I, I met sam that night and we i thought we hit it off he's like i didn't really show interest i was like thanks dude and then he um Slid, slid into my DMs. So you just go a little closer to the mic when you talk. Slid into my DMs. I yeah, nods. I did slide into his DMs. And how'd that um, go? And I saw him the next day. Oh, so. so you didn't get his phone number or anything this first time? No. Why? Because he wasn't interested in me. But you said it went well. Yeah. I thought it did. I thought we found love, but like yeah, it, was, it was a really nice first date. Like I got to meet. He Nadia thought very his well. friend was into me, which oh. is why. Yeah, and he's a very close friend of mine. So there's it, that's a no go zone. Yeah, yeah. And then, then obviously when that sort of cleared up, and I. I I got a DM from Nadia the next day. I was like, what's going on here? And then it was just sort of. So you were supposed to meet up with the friend and then you liked him. Yeah. Well, no, but I wasn't even but like the dating the friend. Okay. Like we were just like, we were friends. He's like, bring your roommate. And hope so my roommate was hot. So he could like her. I'm oh, like, mm-hmm. but that wasn't like a setup. It's like you trying so. to set me up with your roommate. Yeah. She texted me the other day. She's like, yeah, Rachel. you need to hang out. <laughs> okay. Like, Rachel, she's a legend. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel's happening. Rachel. And she, yeah, she's a gem. Well, Rachel. what I love about Sam is you're mature. Because like. We were talking yeah, about we, this. Our bonding thing over Stagecoach was talking about relationships and dating, how hard it is, and just finding someone who's secure, especially right, in right. our industry. I just feel like in this weird world we live in, it is so hard to find a significant other that supports you, loves you, and lets you talk to the opposite sex. Right. Like, it's crazy. Because everyone thinks that they've got bad intentions. Sam is, like, the most secure human, which I love. I don't ever doubt it. Like, oh, he doesn't care about me. It's like, he cares enough to know if he didn't want to be with me, he'd leave my ass. Yeah. And like, Or if I didn't want to be with him, I'd leave him. Like, we're very raw and real. And he's also 30. Turns 31 on yeah, Thursday. He's, ma- he's mature. Yeah. Like, I do... Like I, I, I've hung out with a few girls and I don't hide it. I put them in my vlogs and mm-hmm. I got some of them being like jealous already. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? I'm just, you're I ain't good. hiding shit. Like you're you can really single yeah. though. You need to like live it up. No relationships. So I'm so keen on but Rachel. She's fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is your pitch. Like Rachel. Uh, okay, no, no, no. But you, I mean, there's just, I was, I was on the opposite end of you, which I told you, I was like, I was five years, no relationship. I'm like, what's wrong with me? But I go for these just shithead guys who just like made me question my worth like didn't make me feel like good about myself and i always felt like i was competing with some other instagram model or some other it was just so some other dumb. miss california yeah like oh yeah she's oh uh, trust me i've dealt with a guy who said like a pageant girl fetish and i'm just like what the is pageant that? girl fetish <laughs> oh it's so bad oh, so man. then like you just eventually find that person we're four months in going strong oh yeah movies, but, but yeah very grateful and i think nadia hit the nail on the head i think you, you can you can't control certain things, and if someone's going to be unfaithful to you, and you just don't give them that um, security to be able to do what they want when they want, I mean, they're going to find a way to be unfaithful if they're going to do it anyway. So you may as well just be open, be very transparent, and just be the best version of yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and 
what I really like about you too is you do what t- talk a little bit about and then we'll get back into Nadia yeah, yeah, about what, and then I'll get what you're working on because you're working on a lot of stuff with with mental health yeah 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 so in 2013 I, a good friend of mine took his own life and um we started the foundation actually um goes very well with your podcast channel mm-hmm. called Livin um, oh wow okay it's actually called Livin and uh we utilize the brand through fashion education through schools across the country in Australia and a lot of community-based activations, and we've recently brought it to the state so that we can help more people and break the stigma around mental health. And you've been doing this for how long? Six, almost six years. That's amazing. And, and all, do you still do the, the TV show? Because I'm not familiar with the Australian TV shows. Yeah, the, t- the TV show, for, for the most part, is wrapped up right now, but I'm still pursuing my acting career. But it's a, it's a long game, got to be patient. And you were on card. Survivor? Yeah, that's just a... Did you win? Man, I got very close. I should, I should, I should have won. <laughs> That's insane, dude. Well, guys, give Sam a follow. I'll link everything that he's doing down below. Right, thanks for coming on, yeah, bro. Thanks, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, Appreciate no it. problem. And then we just kick him off the set now. I know. I'm like, I'm sweaty. Okay, bye. You're like me. Back to the star. Um, <laughs> back to me. Hi. Well, I wanted to talk about pageants. <laughs> okay. Because I, when I was in doing my research, oh, and it goes no. along with kind of what he talks about with mental health, it says that you opened up about your body image struggle. Yes. Is that is the pageant? something that did that or what what caused that for you do you think okay so I started modeling when I was 16 years old and I got scouted I never thought I was going to be a model by any means and my career just immediately took off right but when they sign you they're like oh we love you the way that you are you're perfect this way and that way and then every time it go in it's like okay maybe you can lose an inch here or here or here and then it just was like okay we need to drop five pounds and it I was just sitting there like, okay, this isn't what I thought. And at that time I was living in a model's apartment. So, Oh, I know how those are. Okay. I'm yeah. surrounded by six older girls. Some lit- literally live off hard boiled eggs. Some are fully bulimic. Some just smoke cigarettes and coffee and call it. Take I was just, Adderall. And stuff. Exa- yeah. So much Adderall. And yeah. I'm literally 17 at this time with my, <clears throat> like I just graduated high school and I was like, what's going on? Like, what are these people doing? And to this themselves? was in LA. Mm-hmm. And my parents had just moved up back to Kentucky. They were going through some marital issues. So all this was taking mm-hmm. a toll on me on that time of just like, okay, I can't control what they're doing in their marriage. And I felt like they were falling apart. So I kind of felt like I was falling apart. So what I could control was my career and what they were telling me to do. So all I could control was what I put in my body. I got very, very sick um, from 17 to 19. I struggled horribly with anorexia. I went from 135 pounds to 102 in the matter of two months. Um, and I starved myself and then was I that, was that because you were telling yourself that or was it because the agency was telling you that there was a my, the agency was very supportive in my weight loss until there had a point where I wasn't booking work because I looked so malnourished wow. like I just you could see every rib every part of me I looked like a walking skeleton um, so in that moment I needed to get help so I my parents were coming back together in their marriage and I was like, you know what? They've always been my rocks and my everything. I need to open up to them. I hadn't seen them in about a year. Mm-hmm. Um, so they didn't oh, wow, see. Oh, yeah. year. So I ended up going home for Christmas and I got off the plane. They saw me, fell to their knees and cried because they saw their daughter go from just a healthy, happy mm-hmm. young girl to just dead inside. Um, so I got help. For six months, I stayed in Kentucky. I got back on my feet again through my faith, through my family. And then my mom did pageants. She was Miss West Virginia. So she was like, you know, West Virginia, West Virginia. (laughs) So she was like, I think you should do a pageant. Like it'd be a great way for it to not only be about the way you look, because that's what you know through modeling, but you have to use your heart. You have to be passionate about something, share your story. And for so long, I was ashamed of what I went through and I didn't want to really talk about it with anyone. But then I found out later talking about it made me not want to be a hypocrite to what I put out there. So me saying, love the skin you're and do this, it made me better. And mm-hmm. talking about my story actually helped heal me. So I ended up doing Miss California. And as a pageant girl, you're taught to be perfect in world peace and not share too much. You don't want to offend people. Yeah. It's just like this crazy thing. And with me, I was so raw and real. I was different. I had short hair at the time. I didn't have my boob jobs. So I was just like <laughs> this flat chested, choppy haired, like skinny chick who was just like, told my story, went into my interview, shared my heart, and I won Miss California, um, which was 
absolutely crazy at 20 years old. Is that a vote? Like, how does that work? How does the pageant a work? Pageant, you do a four minute interview, then you every single girl walks in their swimsuit, their evening gown, and on like a Saturday, and then Sunday they cut that down to 20 girls. I competed against 400 girls. Oh wow! Yeah, so they cut that down to 20 girls, and then from that 20, you know, t- take it to a mm-hmm. 10, take it to a five. And I nailed my question at Miss California as far as Miss USA. I flubbed really bad. I wanted to talk about okay, that. Okay, but anyways, we're still talking about the good part of okay. my pageant world. Um, <laughs> so then I won Miss California and I was a spokesperson for eating disorders and body dysmorphia. Shared my story. Were you the, I feel like that was ahead of the time because like a lot of people now on YouTube and stuff. like Love it's the cool. skin you're in. It's yeah, cool to like embrace your body. Be vulnerable. Yeah. yeah. No, I think you I'd did like that. To, was I it was, hard? I was before that. Yeah, you were before sc- the curve. The scary part of that was just like that wasn't talked about. Like, right, of course. Plus, models weren't being glorified. Everything was just kind of like, oh, it's tricky water. They still want you skinny, but like, we're kind of accepting. And like, at that point, I just, like I said, it was my healing process. Like, being able to talk about it made me heal. So, my entire year of Miss California, I'll never say that I was a recovered anorexic. I was a recovering anorexic when I was Miss California, but it changed my life. And it was the best thing I could have asked for. And did you go, you said you went around talking or something to help teens that struggle with it, like growing up? My full-time job was literally, I'd go, and as a title holder, your title is what you make it. So some girls will do it just for the photo shoots and the Mm -hmm. events and the this and that. I made it a job. So I spoke at least like two times a week at different middle schools, high schools to young girls and any clubs or at churches and just trying to instill positive body image in them. And the most amazing thing was like, I, I was never to glorify myself. It was to make me better as a person. But like the best thing ever would be a young girl coming up to me who's 15 years old. And she's like, thank you so much for not helping me skip lunch today. Yeah. And Cause that's I, a real thing. And that- I would leave there just like so fulfilled because no one talked about it at that time. Now it's talked about, mm-hmm. it's great and love the skin you're in is yeah. used everywhere. But I swear I'd like to, I don't want to say I was a starter yeah. of it, but I was, I was a part of that beginning movement of, really embracing you no matter what size because I'm not a plus size model either no. I'm thick skinny is what they call me in my with industry. c's not no k yeah, yeah, thick, <laughs> thick, t-h-i-c-c and I'm like I'm still offended by that because I really like okay that's Isn't just that crazy my, that I'm considered thick and I'm like if I were to say I'm thick in the normal world they'd be like you got some serious issues, issues you ain't yeah. thick I'm thick yeah but then for me I'm told that I'm thick and they're like, well, that's just your market. It's good for you. You're like a four to six. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> like, so what? Now I'm in demand. So all you is it like Victoria's that- Secret now, like z- z- double zero or yeah, something like that's, that? It's an unrealistic standard for women. So anyone who is like, I would love to get into modeling, like tell me how I'm the first person to be like, don't. And it's not belittling their dreams. It's more of just, I know what I went through. I know how it changes the way you look at yourself in the mirror and crushes your confidence and I want every young woman to love themselves just the way that they are modeling is not the way to do that damn yeah well, I'm glad that you opened up about that yeah that's really awesome yeah um, it's hard it's hard definitely to even I like with my audience I I feel like I've opened up more with my podcast yeah. but it's still like I don't want to open up about some things you know because yeah. I don't want to I don't know my dad gets mad at me and dad if you're watching right now talking about like hooking up and stuff <laughs> Dad, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but that's really awesome. Yeah. But let's talk about the flub. The flub. Why well, was it considered a flub? Because I watched it and you just like took a deep breath. Okay. And it wasn't that bad of an answer, right? I, I mean, got- look. So she got asked the question in Miss, what, USA? Uh-huh. About I made the like top five. economics or something and how the rich, how do you bring the rich and the poor close together or something it like that? It was Nigel Barker decided to ruin my life and be like, Nadia. Uh, was the socioeconomic gap between yeah. the rich and the poor how would you bridge it and i'm like I'm you're like i'm so 20 something tw- years old i was old. 20 i'm like <laughs> i can instill positive body of young women i have such a great track record you're asking me to bridge the gap our political <laughs> candidates at that time you when it was it was literally like during the election trump yeah. and hillary could not answer that question you're gonna ask the 20 year old <laughs> my hell i blacked out i literally said the poor need to work hard oh my god <laughs> <laughs> the rich need to be more giving and the poor need to work hard. Who says that? I don't know, but I became like a meme. I don't know <laughs> what I would say. I panicked. Like, if we haven't figured it out, then who? The, how the fuck am I going to figure it out? You I, know what I'm saying? I just... Like, you know, how are you going to bring the rich and the poor and, and narrow the gap? Yeah. Well, we haven't figured it out, so... Oh, fuck. That's what I would have said. Well, then I how just, do you expect some 20-year-old fucking... 
Miss California to figure it out. And I genuinely like look back at that moment and I'm like, oh, like if I could just say, I don't know. I would much rather have gone up there and said, I don't know, than trying to break down something that didn't even process. But who gave you shit for it? Like the, the world? entire world, except Daily Mail and Cosmopolitan, because <laughs> I did this little comeback afterwards. Where so one of the performers at Miss USA was the Backstreet Boys, and oh, um, I saw that little yeah, yeah. video. So I did a little. Cl- I found one of those Backstreet Boys in the lobby, and I was like, "Hey, I just literally like told America they need to work hard. <laughs> we gotta like come back from this." I was like, "Can you just sing? Tell me why." Like this is literally in the lobby. He's like. Yeah, sure. Like, whatever. I thought you did great. Like, the yeah. nicest guy, Howie. Thank you for being the gem you are. <laughs> um, we did this, like, little, like, I don't know about the economy flop. I made fun of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Self deprecation is the best. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. at that time, I'm like, there's no coming back from this. So, might as well have a good laugh. Posted it, went viral, got my little Daily Mail and Cosmo saying, you know what? That was like the real winner there right. because she just was able to laugh herself. So, Bad things came out of it. Of I had a lot of people being like, "You are in a title, this, that, like piece of crap." I mean, did that so affect she, you? Of course, I went into hiding for like two weeks. I was just like, "Oh my god, I can't even like look." I had to go on TMZ. I did do like the di- like Daily Show. It was terrible because I feel bad for the winner. She didn't even get the press she deserved. Of like, <laughs> your Miss USA was like, "What about the girl who told the porny to work hard?" I'm like, "Oh my gosh." Um, but I did it and like, I tried to defend myself and people would still ask me, what would you answer now? I'm like, I still don't know. So after that, of course, social media, you know, more than anyone, people can be mean, like really, really vicious. So I had to like take a step back from it. And then I came back stronger than ever. I'm just like, well, I messed up. You can know me for that, but I'm so much more than that. And that answer doesn't define my intelligence. This is my purpose. This is my passion. I'll stand by it. And I still can't bridge the gap at 23. <laughs> I won't be able to at 25. Do you want me to answer communism? Like, I don't know how to please the world. So here we are. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love. Yeah, I love. <laughs> I just love how open you are with everything. Oh. Like, you're like, yeah, but, yeah, I told the poor they need to work hard. <laughs> like, I really do like the other day I texted it. Nadia. If you guys have seen my vlogs, Ooh, uh, <laughs> like, yo, what are you up to? And she's like, oh, there's I'm getting a pep. Sme- I called it a schmear. Pep schmear. <laughs> A pep, just straight up, straight pep honesty, smear. doesn't give a fuck what she's saying. Um, I want to ask, what's it like? I've never had someone that's had like a famous parent on the show. What's it like growing up with a, is a famous parent? Is there pressure? Is there like um, the limelight? Like, do you feel entitled? Oh, n- not by no means entitled because... Our generation doesn't know who the heck Rico Suave was. Like, the rare people do, but... It's not even his name. It's Gerardo, but, like, his stage name was Rico Suave, and, like, that was his one-hit wonder. Like, he wasn't, like... (laughs) It's not, like, freaking Lionel Richie, like, coming... Like, it was a one-hit wonder, and I love my dad to death, the most amazing guy, but, like, growing up, it was always the parents who were obsessed with, like, oh, my God, Nadia, your dad, I was such a huge fan, and it always made me uncomfortable. Like, my teachers would, like, put it on the projector and, like, try to embarrass me and, like... A, of course loving way but as far as our generation like I never found it an issue growing up I think people thought the idea was cool and I definitely you know just kind of rode that wave of like call me Rika Suave yeah. and I'm like I'm the spawn of Rico <laughs> but not everyone knows him so well, did I'm, you feel since he was in the entertainment business did you feel that you had to go in that way and like because your mom was Miss uh, West Virginia and you did mess the pageants yeah. here did you feel like you wanted to be singing or um, there was definitely pressure from my dad, uh, to, cause you can go, sing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, he worked at Interscope for 10 years, then he became a pastor and now he's the head of Latin at Spotify. My dad has like the craziest like mm-hmm. story ever. Um, but he always pushed music on me and I never really found passion music until like I was, you know, younger and I was singing at my our family's Bible studies and I was like, okay, I'm not that bad at it. And I actually, it made me feel good. Just, what was your favorite song to sing? I found God at the corner of... <laughs> it's not a worship music. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Isn't that... Was that Coldplay? Like the fray or something. The fray. Oh, my God. Where are you? <laughs> I'll probably get copyrighted for that since you can't sing music on YouTube anymore. Oh, you're... Fu- not at all? No, I sang American Idiot in my vlog and they claimed my whole video. Okay, how is that fair? How do people do singing covers anymore? I don't know. Can you not? I guess not. I guess I should give that up. Um, so you can't <laughs> sing. Okay, yeah. Well, I um, <laughs> I felt the pressure of becoming, uh, you know, going into singing. And then I actually did fall in love with it, but not in the way of, I want to be the next Taylor Swift. It yeah, was yeah. like, 
I just love singing worship because I'm in a dark industry that makes me feel pretty icky about myself 99% of the time. So I needed something that was like, I'm going to dedicate my Sundays to going and singing at church and like feeling good about myself because singing out words that inspired people and seeing how it moved, like the congregation made my heart so happy. But then I had to take a step back because I post too many swimsuit and bra photos on my Instagram. Oh, so you're not allowed to swim it. I can't sing or at church anymore. Why did I say swim? <laughs> you're not allowed to swim, to swim at, at church. church? No. Um, so now I had to take a step back, which is okay. I understand it. Oh my gosh. Like they have people in the church going through like sexual issues and they're like, our worship leader was great. Let me find her on Instagram. And it's like me, like <laughs> it's my cleavage. <laughs> like all the dudes at church that are like having marital issues. They're like, Oh, mm. this yeah. is my God gave yeah. me her. And I'm like, no, this is not how it works. So I, I took a step back from that, which is, I still go to church. Faith is still a huge part of my life, but now if I am going to sing, I know that it can't be in that light because unfortunately religion can be ugly. Sometimes I'm very judgmental and I never like to shut my religion down anyone's throat. Yeah. I'm always just a faith driven person who loves God and that's my relationship with him. And everyone can believe what they want to believe. If you're a Buddhist, if you're a Muslim, mm-hmm. I love you for you. If you have a good heart, great. Right. But religion can be ugly. So I decided to not put myself in that platform to feel like be talked down by people who are supposed to be full of love. You know, how do you feel about stuff like that? Like posting those types of photos on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I mean, you can, I mean, look, bathing out. suit, dude, you fucking go to the pool. You see someone in a bathing suit. Yeah. Absolutely. Who fucking cares if you post it on Instagram? And you know, from my Instagram, I'm not a tits and ass girl. Yeah. There are girls who literally are like, <laughs> I'm naked. Happy hump day. Like what? <laughs> it, my dad follows me. If I post something that's like, right. Even just a little too much. He's like, take it down. Yeah. It's like I said, if I say the word sex, my dad calls me and said, you're bad influence. Take that off. Yeah. No, seriously. So my dad is the first person to be like, hold me accountable. And I don't right. want to put stuff out to the world that I know my future children are going to see and be right. like, mommy was a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> God, rather put out a good positive image. Um, I do post me sexy, but that's cause my, that's my job and mm-hmm. I'll never be like degrading to women. I think Instagram can be very ugly cause that's the girls with so many followers, right? They're like at right. 3 million for almost posting their nipple. Uh-huh. I'm like, well, good with the for little, you. With, they put like the X over oh, it. Oh yeah. And I'm yeah. like, but what legacy are you leaving behind? I think something that really draws me to you though, and why we are such good friends is because you're so positive. Everything that you put out to the world is funny, relatable, but you're not like self-absorbed and you don't ever glorify yourself. Like you really just are, why you have such a big fan base is because you are so freaking relatable and it's such a cool quality to find because in LA, you know, it's very hard. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I think it has to do with Ohio. See, and Kentucky, West, oh, West Virginia, Kentucky. Ohio. Yeah, oh, Midwest Wales. is the best. I mean, it gave us our morals and values to have at least a humbling and being here, being like, yeah, of course. Hell, this it's is so cool. hard to find good people in LA, guys. If you want to move here, make sure you guys like. I got a friend. Like group. people go in and out of your life like crazy here because you got you you don't really know what their invested yeah intentions are with you. But I wanted to go back. So you say you post like sexy, whatever. What defines sexy to you? Because obviously you struggled with the whole thing and you say sexy as in you post sexy photos. What is sexy to you, to to you, not to the world. Sexy is a confident photo where I personally, for me, this is the way I view it is I'll see a photo of myself in a swimsuit. Right. And I used to hate seeing myself in swimsuits. Like it was a very like shameful moment for me of like, I'm not skinny enough. I'd pick myself apart. And what I find sexy now is to be able to post a photo of me where I look at myself. I'm like, I do look curvy. I was like, but hell, that's recovery. I'm like healthy. I'm happy now. I'm at the best state in my career. And this is what I'm going to put out there because I was skin and bones for so long. So now to be able to embrace my body and confidently put that, put that out there, that's sexy to me. It's like, I, I find the other stuff trashy. I find girls re- who really put too much out there. That's not something you want young girls to see. That's not the influence you want to put upon the younger generation to meet a mold that's just like, unrealistic mm-hmm. and not morally correct so anything that's sexy for me is just kind of like hey i look freaking good in that swimsuit the cleave looks great thank you dr <laughs> farzani like there are just <laughs> moments of me just being like that looks good but it really does come from a viewpoint of just like i'm recovered and i'm so happy that i can be able to do this confidently and feel good about myself confidence is like the most sexy feature confidence intelligence whatever um it's funny because I saw some girl's Instagram photo earlier and uh, she was like wearing a crop top and the caption was something like, um, 
I'm so cold. Ugh. And I was just like, put a fucking sweatshirt on. Like <laughs> that, I, com- I commented that back. Actually, I said, fun fact, in 1919, Champion invented the hooded, hooded sweatshirt. Oh it's been God. around for 100 years, keeping people warm. And you keep- should try to invest in one because every photo of her is fucking tits and ass. So yeah. it's like, dude, if you're going to put a caption half clothed that you're cold, fucking post a photo with a sweatshirt on fully and but that's just them <laughs> waiting for the attention of oh i'll keep you warm yes. like there are just girls who are like ladies let us respect <laughs> ourselves like please but people just want attention yeah. that's what gets them followers is views it, views oh my god i'm cold she's like nipply and like short i'm like well put my on favorite a photo jacket. my favorite photo is um you know you have the girls that go do the beach photos or whatever but when they go snowboarding they have to bring their bathing and suit bikini. and take the bikini photo in the snow. Okay, I can promise you as a friend I'll never be that person. Because the difference <laughs> between the bikini photo and wearing snow pants is 100,000 likes. I j- exactly. But like I'm if like- it doesn't, if she has snow pants on, 8,000 likes. If she's in her bikini, like 120,000 likes. I really have never even thought about that, but I see so many girls in their snow pants with a bikini top and I'm like, <laughs> are you... Are you trying to catch uh, an That's my favorite photo. Yeah. That Where is. do you see the future of your career going? What's your plan? Do you got a game plan or are you just living in the moment with Sam? Uh, I'm definitely <laughs> living in the moment, but I also do have like goals and dreams for myself. I, I do want to steer off into speaking. And I think the beauty of that is what Sam does has been such like a positive influence on my life to where I'm like after Miss California, I became back to full-time model. I worked a lot more because yeah, I, I I did have more followers or I did, you know, mm-hmm. I, I became something that was like in demand, but I do find this career very unfulfilling. I, I do love to sing. I have like the things that I love to do, but I really want to start pursuing the things that make me happy rather than the things that make me money because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, money isn't happiness. Like, right. Oh it no, really, I learned that this year. Yeah, yeah. exactly. As you can make so much money from this one campaign shoot, but you like starved yourself three days before and were panicked and had anxiety. And I've lived my life th- like this for seven years where I'm like, I want to venture off into something that fills my heart. And I do find that speaking and instilling positive like confidence into young women makes my heart happy. And if I'm being a light in the world, I'm going to do that and use my social media to be that for young girls. Um, but I really don't exactly know what the game plan is, but I'm riding the wave. And I, I do know that modeling is not forever. It is short lived mm-hmm. and it is probably going to be hanging up my <laughs> my heels and my casting book and put them aside within like the next two years do you hate the fact that um in today's day and age you have to like have followers to book jobs when i started it never was like that yeah like that's what was crazy it was you had to be five ten and up you had to be a certain measurement and when you'd write on a casting sheet it was never because nowadays it's name agency following number it used to be your height i'm like <laughs> okay so what does it matter i now look and like some girls literally won't even ride it because they they're just models yeah. who are freaking beautiful who can't book a damn job because the 1.5 million five four chick no offense to short girls <laughs> is booking that job that wasn't the traditional model way yeah. but i think traditional models should be broken in general i just don't think it go the influencer out i think we could promote healthy bodies and like change it into something beautiful not plus, not size zero, but just like the normal average girl who's relatable and can appeal to the world. Um, But no, now it's just freaking following based. I have a decent following and I get told by Glenn, "Mm, your insights like weren't very strong on this. So like, we don't want to do the social media collaboration with you. I'm like, fuck off. (laughs) (laughs) Enjoy. Cause this, when Instagram dies, what's your brand going to be? I mean, Instagram is ruining instagram for influencers i know everyone's getting a drop in engagement story views all this it's oh, like i know they're trying to shift so hardcore to like you pay to get people to see your Promote shit it. i'm like yeah. you want me to you want me to buy a bot so yeah. that i can get more followers that is my biggest pet peeve genuinely is the people who buy these little bot things because it's so obvious i'll see mm. a girl who's like oh my god my, my following is just like growing i'm like oh, is it because i'm watching and it's just like these random comments like that person will go randomly comment on some random person's photo and be like great shot thumbs up yeah that's a bot doing yeah. that like and i just find that whole algorithm thing so it sucks weird. that it's come to that to be honest i th- i think it should be illegal well i heard that instagram's <laughs> like 
maybe they were testing taking away the like number. So like if you go to your photo, you can't see how many likes you get. Yeah. Do you think that would be beneficial or not? For everyone's mental, yeah. Because then it's less about like, I mean, then people will just buy a bunch of followers, mm-hmm. you know, and it'll say a million followers and no one knows how many likes they get, which <laughs> is cool. You won't see their insights. But you'll still, you won't see their insights, but yeah. they will. Um, I don't know. I think it'll be good because I think a lot of 2018 for a lot of people was a struggle on social media because they were panicking because of all the numbers and everyone's followings were going down and numbers yeah. were going, I lose followers every day on Instagram. Yeah. Like I used to get 700,000 opens on my Instagram story and I get like a hundred thousand if I'm lucky. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get shoved to the bottom if yeah. my boobies are now. I'm like, <laughs> well, you know, that's they okay have, for me. They have like artificial intelligence that can see that stuff too. That's the crazy thing. I just think it's become ugly. Like I think the purpose of Instagram can be used so beautifully if we just used it for the right Mm -hmm. reasons like if people just wanted to be funny on instagram be funny and be seen the way that you're supposed to be seen but this promoting this bot thing this buying of followers it just makes it something that is not good for any like young person's mental health why don't you post cooking videos i know you like want to cook in my research, you talked a lot about how you love I cooking see. and you want to open an Ecuadorian, Guatemalan store. Ecuadorian, Mediterranean. You know what? I'm very impressed with your research. You're finding stuff. I'm like, I said that. Yeah. <laughs> um, no. So before I started modeling, like I was going to go to culinary school. Like I grew up in a very multicultural background. Which is kind of ironic because you struggle with anorexia, but you Okay, love so food. why I don't want to go to culinary school okay. now is because my freaking career made me fear food, which oh, is okay. so sad because it was so my love I loved pleasing people's taste buds and then I became anal and no one wanted to eat my food because I was like no butter egg whites like like no carbs Pepper only no salt yeah, exactly I became that person my mom's like your food's nasty like, <laughs> especially no. coming from West Virginia Kentucky oh, Kentucky they're like Kentucky fry everything yeah. you order an egg white omelet there it's yellow yeah. because of butter yeah. like, and you're like okay um but yeah I did lose my passion for wanting to cook and open up a restaurant I think that was like a a plan for me before I started, you know, speaking and finding my passion there. So, um, I still cook at home. I can't necessarily say it's that yummy, but Sam eats just as clean as I do. So our, (laughs) our cooking together is not very appealing on the table. You're not vegan or anything, are you? Uh -uh. Hell no. Hell no. I don't think anyone from the Midwest is vegan. That would be literally the (laughs) biggest struggle for me ever. (laughs) I could never give up cheese. Oh, cheese is your... I can't even really eat cheese anymore. What? I think I'm kind of lactose. Uh, well, I think I kind of am too. I get really bad acid reflux and my stomach bloats <laughs> like I'm nine months pregnant. But it's so but it's worth it. it's so worth it. <laughs> you get a nice cheese board with like a little big jam, brie cheese. Are you like a wine and cheese girl at night? Ooh. Maybe some crackers in there? I, ask me how many cheese boards I eat a week. Maybe like two to three. Do you buy... Are you like into That's why the I'm cheeses? That's thick with the CC. That is cheese boards. Are you into <laughs> the cheeses or do you just like go and get like a craft slice out of the cupboard and okay. or the fridge and eat it? Or like I'm string s- cheese? Nah. We're a brie gouda... Um, What's the cheese that has like the cheddar, hard outside with the soft brie. inside and you like use the cheese knife thing and then you put it on a cracker and it's so good. Brie, I could eat a brick. of uh, You give me a block of brie. Do you eat the outside of it? Oh, the crust is so good. Ew. Isn't that shit like fucking 9,000 years old? Maybe, but it's not hurting me, so we fine. <laughs> maybe that's why you have stomach aches. I may be a little bit more constipated because of the cheese, but you know, that's life. You, you win some, you lose some. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll have cheese and crackers. I know we're partying this weekend. Oh, Sam's Someone's birthday's birthday. coming up. Number 30 or 31? 31. Ooh, I'm dating an old man. It's like not that big of a difference. You're a fine wine, like an aged fine wine. He's a cheese. <laughs> you a brie cheese, baby. All right. Yeah. I think that's where we wrap it up here, guys. We're getting, getting a little tension. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being on the show, Nadia. Of guys. Of course. Thank you for listening. I'll put all of her links down in the description. Go give her a follow. Go give her some thumbs up. Listen to her message. Miss California. T- not teen, you say. No, you weren't teen. I'm USA yes. 2016. Just don't ask her about economics, guys. We'll see you guys next week on Living Large. Woo! Deuces. Woo!